everybody. I'm Nico Sacuña, Senior Director of Technical Product Marketing here at Domo. Domo enables modern BI for all through data agility, data literacy, and intelligent action. Data agility is about democratizing tools that once only lived in IT for data prep so data teams can go faster. It's about data accessibility at cloud scale with an extensible data integration framework. This includes the ability to connect to any source with over a thousand connectors, unlocking all data in an organization. Our multi-cloud data fabric enables data brought into Domo from various cloud systems and other sources so they can be combined, augmented, updated, and then written back out to source systems or pushed into other platforms. Data literacy, it's not about teaching business users how to be data scientists, but rather removing as much friction as possible from the entire process. It's about putting well-governed analytics power into the hands of those users, inspiring discussion and curiosity with analytics. In this context, it's also about inspiring data storytelling, which moves us into intelligent action. It's about modernizing any business process at unbelievable speed and in intelligent applications that automate business workflows, enable immediate responses that drive action. It also refers to what we call Domo Everywhere, embedded and extended analytics capabilities with configured sandboxes that function as distributed intelligence inside and outside the organization. Intelligent Apps gives knowledge workers and developers the ability to create insight-driven applications and rapidly build apps with the tools they are most comfortable with. That's Modern BI with Domo. Let's get into the global dashboard. In this demo, we'll show you how COVID-19 trends will continue to change. Metrics that are in focus now will likely be different in the future as new data starts to come in. This is why you need data agility in order to take action quickly as a public policymaker. For instance, the current metric that's trending is around vaccine hesitancy. So we have the data to prove it, but first let's set the stage by looking at global trends. In this multi-widget dashboard with filtering spans, we're looking at visualizations that display global trends. You can see that more than a billion people here have been given the vaccine in over 166 countries. In the US, an average of 2.7 million vaccines per day have been administered, according to data from the CDC. This is a parallel view on case counts and vaccinations. This is a map with a seven-day rolling average of daily vaccinations the seven-day vaccination average, as well as a graph that shows the spread of COVID-19 over time and the number of vaccines per capita displayed in a heat map. We also have some natural language generation working in the back end to provide these auto-generated insights with zero human touch to summarize the findings on this map. And we also have a word cloud here of the most prevalent public health measures that are taken as well as their categories. So this interactive visualization can now start to reveal impactful ways to compare vaccine distribution and measures by country. So we can do some filters here. So for instance, we can take a look at the AMRO region of the WHO that just filters out the Americas. And then we could also start to drill down into a specific country. So let's do that. If we go into the United States, for instance, we could now see that according to this data, the U.S. was a little bit more lenient when it comes to social distancing and focused more on socioeconomic measures, strengthening the public health system, as well as general recommendations and awareness campaigns. Uh, doing a quick comparison to, let's say, Australia, we can see here that Australia essentially beat the virus. There was a, a little spike in the fall of 2020, and they just really flattened the curve almost completely. Um, even as global vaccinations went up, we can't draw a correlation to that yet, but we can see how Australia implemented economic measures, they limited public gatherings, and they even closed some businesses. So that's a really interesting insight right there. In this dashboard, you can see the various countries with vaccinations per 100 and new cases per 100,000 in the population. So you can basically set a goal, which right now is at 70%, which is the threshold that's been talked about to provide a key outcome as a public health official, either we instituted some sort of restrictive measure or you didn't, um, you're basically reacting to waves of restrictions. But we wanna look ahead and understand vaccinations. So we'll do that in the next section. Let's go ahead and take a look at vaccine hesitancy in the United States. 
So now with the initial global snapshot, we can drill deeper into our investigation on vaccine hesitancy. So we're starting here with a blank dashboard. We'll be creating a new card, which is a visualization based on existing data. And we'll be using Gartner demo state data, which takes us into our analyzer tool. Here we want to look at people getting their first shot by hesitancy, which was captured through the CDC survey data set. Here we've created what are called beast modes, which are essentially calculations based on first shots on a seven day average per 100,000 people. On this one, we have a hesitancy rank sorting. And then here we have hesitancy state ranking bins, which we could now use to sort and filter. We'll now pull in hesitancy state ranking bins as a series here. And then we'll pull in first shots on a seven day average in the Y axis keep the date the same over here, and then we'll turn it into a line graph. Now we want to sort by date and the hesitancy state ranking bins that we just created. And say we want to just graph this by week based on just this year. So now we can see here that the states with the very low hesitancy and the states with a very high hesitancy have diverged quite a bit. You can see that the numbers are going down, even if this isn't a full week yet, so the numbers aren't expected to be as high. But again, based on the hesitancy of the state, you can see that they're in order in terms of the number of people getting vaccines, which leads us to believe that vaccine hesitancy is in fact a real trend. So as a public policymaker, I would definitely make some decisions on how to address the high hesitancy populations. All right, we'll go ahead and rename this and we'll save and close it. Now we want to build on this dashboard. So let's start to add existing cards to this. Let's add U.S. vaccinations gauge. Let's also add U.S. first vaccination gauge. We're not done, so let's add some more. Let's add effective SVI index and let's add estimated hesitancy by county. I also want the social vulnerability index and the ability to handle a crisis. So now let's edit our dashboard. Let's move US vaccination gauge over here and let's put the US first vaccination gauge over here. So if we wanted to do more analysis, let's look at this card on the effect of SVI index and hesitancy on vaccination rate by state. So the very high SVI risk states and the very high hesitancy states are very low on vaccination rates. And if you look at very low hesitancy, low SVI risk regions, they have very high vaccination rates. In fact, we're seeing 50% higher vaccination rates over here. So if you wanted to do some filtering and say I wanted an even deeper look at hesitancy and I wanted to look at the state ranking bins and I wanted to just look at the very low hesitancy states, you can apply it and you can see that the dashboard updated and these are all now connected. So that's your dashboard. Now we can take a step back and look at some data prep workflows. So now we'll get into some data prep workflows. We'll connect to a CDC data set, execute a join, then create a few bins. We'll start by lighting up a connector through Domo's vast library. It's really easy to use and we have over a thousand of them. It's this ease of use and access to data that's definitely a huge differentiator for Domo. So let's find the CDC data set here. There it is. So we can just type in vaccine and we can see here that we can just pull up vaccine hesitancy for COVID-19 for both county and local estimates. We hit next and let's say I'm an NGO or healthcare policymaker that wants to schedule a report. So we'll wanna pull the data probably an hour before we send it out. So let's do it at 6 a.m. So this takes us to our data profiler tool where we can explore data quality issues. So let's view statistics by column. Now I can see that there are 3,142 counties 
All of the FIPS codes are here as well. These FIPS codes are essentially Federal Information Processing Standards, which is a published series of standardized codes. We see that there are no nulls over here. So now we can go to Correlations, where we select Strongly Hesitant and Estimated Hesitant, and we can in fact see that there is a correlation. We also pulled in the SVI scores, and it doesn't appear to be correlated here. Next, we want to join this to a different data set, so let's go ahead and do that. So now we're in our Magic ETL tool, and we are going to combine the CDC data set with a data set that we've used and provided for our own customers on COVID data. So we'll go ahead and select it here. It's county demo data, and we're just going to do a very quick join. We'll do that by dragging over the join data tile and combine these data sets here. And we will connect it using the FIPS code. And then just create an output data set from it, which I will rename. That's done and we'll save it and run it. So now with this new output data set, let's go ahead and create a visualization. So now what we'll do is we'll create a new calculated field, what we call internally as a beast mode, and we'll just enter a calculation, validate the formula, and we will drag it over here into the x-axis as well as create a series, and we'll do a count of county name in the y-axis. So now we have a visual that shows how many counties are considered having high hesitancy and which ones have low hesitancy, which concludes our data prep section. Okay, we've connected to CDC data. We've built some custom cards to do an initial analysis on hesitancy, as well as a global dashboard that starts to tell a story about vaccination rates. Now we want to share this information to groups that would benefit from it. All right, so I'm a public health official and I have some initial data on hesitancy and now I want to set an alert. So let's go into US first vaccination gauge. By clicking on this card right here, then we go into the alert icon to set a new alert. So anytime the summary number is less than a certain number, let's call it a million. We can also set the alert if it's in between also, if the delta changes, increases, or decreases, you have a lot of options here in terms of setting an alert based on the specific summary number that you want. So let's go ahead and hit next. So now we can compose a notification message based on certain rules that we can plug here. We'll hit next. Now I wanna share this with my colleagues. Let's put a couple people here and hit save. So this just provides a summary on that alert that we just set up. So now we can take a look at this alert and we can see that it can be shared in numerous ways. It can be shared via text message, it can be sent via email, or it can be pushed through an app via a push notification. So now that we've set that up, let's go back to the main dashboard that we completed over here. And let's look at some of the exporting features. We can export as a PowerPoint, let's start with that. So there are a lot of different ways that you can share. You could obviously export that PowerPoint and just download it, as well as the PDF. That's very straightforward. You can also schedule this as a report. Say I wanted to schedule this to myself and to my various team members. All I need to do is send the report and configure it based on the dates and when I wanna do it and how regularly I wanna do it and just hit schedule. We also have a product called Domo Everywhere, which enables embedded and extended analytics capabilities with configured sandboxes that function as distributed intelligence inside and outside the organization. So you can just go ahead and embed this entire dashboard. You can allow interactions and filtering, show the specific bars that you want, and allow exports. You can also embed privately, so this will generate a share link code or an iframe embed code directly. And of course, you can share this publicly as well. So these are just some of our sharing capabilities. Let's now move on to some cool innovations. 
like I mentioned before, Domo's key differentiator is in our ability to deliver modern BI for all through a single logical layer with speed, performance, and data accessibility. It's just super easy to light up a connector here and bring it into Domo for business users to start delivering insights. So I'll actually show you this COVID data set that we provide to customers here. They actually pull this data into their own environments and you can see that there's about 30 million rows. So now companies can look at this data, run an analysis and make some business decisions. We'll open this with our new Views Explorer tool, which allows us to create a view of the data no matter where it sits. So now we can do some filtering here. Let's just take a look at the United States. Let's only filter to this column over here. And we can also filter here by a new metric. Let's call it new cases, apply that. And say we just wanted to filter based on a date of the last 30 days. So now we're looking at new cases in the last 30 days in the United States. We're gonna to wanna to group this together. So let's say we want to group it by the state and we want the amount over here. And what we wanna do is we want the sum. So let's go ahead and finish that and apply it. So what we wanna find out here is in the last 30 days, where do we see the most new cases? And you can see that we have gone from about 30 million rows down to 60 rows in less than 30 seconds. And of course, the last thing I wanna do is sort it. Let's find out what the highest is. And we have Michigan, Florida, New York, Pennsylvania, and Texas as the top five hotspots for new cases. And maybe I wanna export this. So that immediately exports, and now I can go ahead and send it off, including all the new sharing features that we mentioned earlier. And last but not least, what's both hot and cool at Domo in terms of innovations is DDX Bricks, which are pre-built objects that allow you to create advanced visualizations and apps that can be customized by simply copying and pasting code. For instance, if I wanted to see how global metrics on how vaccinations have changed over time, this donut chart here with a slider can show that in an interactive way. But if I have some coding skills, I can just open up this toolbox over here. I can copy paste examples from the web to customize my dashboard. I can build a new chart type by using my favorite UI library. I can leverage D3 snippets to create innovative new data visualizations or specialized UI components. I can do all this editing in real time using the script box to quickly perfect my app. And it's just a really easy way to connect a data set available in Domo or use sample data to start building tools in a very dynamic way. And that concludes our COVID-19 VI and Analytics Insights demo. Hope to see you all again soon. Stay healthy and safe out there.